this video will cover how you can get this incredible backhand blade bleed build going in literally one minute after starting the DLC. This video will also cover any spells, talismans and armor sets you might need for this build, while also covering tips and tricks to get the most out of this build. The backhand blades have a really fast and deadly playstyle. The default Ash of War, Blind Spot, allows you to dodge and attack enemies from the side. The running R2 attack lets you hit four times in quick succession, two hits from each sword. This is pretty similar to the curved scimitars build we're going to talk about later. It also lets you carry through your sprint, which lets you be very mobile while attacking. You can also control the direction of your weapon skill with your sticks, which means you can use this to dodge attacks left or right since it also has iframes. This skill reminds me a lot of Bloodhound's finesse from the Bloodhound's Fang. The only downside is that the Ash of War consumes a lot of stamina, so you can't spam it in fights. However, you won't need to rely on it much, since the light attacks provide all the damage you need. You would only rely on the Ash of War for strategic dodges. So the ideal playstyle here is being able to continuously combo your attacks, and then to use your skill to dodge enemy attacks, and then continuing a combo of attacks again. This weapon scales really well on dexterity. At max upgrade, it has S scaling in dexterity, giving you a lot of damage out of the weapon. However, it doesn't have any native status effect buildups, which means you would either have to go for the blood infusion, in which case you're going to have lower damage, since you don't get that S scaling in dexterity, so you kind of have to decide whether bleeding is worth it to you, or whether you want to stick with maximum damage. Or alternatively, you can use Blood Flame Blade to deal a lot of physical damage and build up bleed at the same time. However, if you're using Blood Flame Blade, remember you cannot use it with Occult Affinity, in which case you might want to go with Keen, which might end up being better overall because of that S scaling on Dex. Now moving on to spells, we're keeping it basic and simple and using Flame Grant Me Strength for that 20% buff on physical damage. You could also use Golden Vow if you have it for another 15% physical damage boost. This also stacks with Flame Grant Me Strength. This spell combo is particularly useful in the Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC, where enemies hit hard, and you need to hit harder. Now let's talk about Talismans. Starting with the Shard of Alexander or the Warrior Jar Shard if you're in early game. Either Talisman will raise the attack power of skills by a percentage, and considering we're going to be using the weapon skill frequently, using one of these two Talismans will always be a great buff. I'm also using the Green Turtle Talisman to be able to recover stamina 17% faster. Or even better is the Two-Headed Turtle Talisman, which will boost stamina recovery even faster. This is a new talisman in the DLC, and we have a location guide for it on the channel. Next, the Rotten Winged Insignia, or Millicent's Prosthesis, which would both increase your attack power by a percentage for every successive hit you deal. But, if you use Millicent's Prosthesis, it will also give you an additional 5 levels of dexterity, which can help with the weapon's damage as it scales on dex, which makes it the better option of the two. Finally, there's the Lord of Blood's Exaltation to increase attack power every time blood loss is triggered, which is probably going to be very often. In fact, this talisman stacks with the White Mask, which also increases your attack power by 10% for 20 seconds if something around you suffers from blood loss. This adds up to be a total of 30% extra damage, which is some insane damage. These are the talismans that I'm running, but you could also use the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman to reduce physical damage taken by 20%, and the Bull Goat's Talisman to raise your poise by 33%. These two talismans are great since the DLC enemies hit like a truck, and since this weapon performs best if you're able to hit enemies without being interrupted, just so you could proc that insane bleed. Both these talismans allow you to survive while dealing back incredible damage. Moving on to the armor sets for this build. There isn't one specific armor set to be using here. It's just fashion, really. So I went for some armor that looks ideal for a quick and deadly assassin. Namely, I'm using the Black Knife armor set with the skeletal mask. I sometimes even switch out the chest piece for the Ronin chest piece because I love the way the cape looks from that. Finally, let's talk about the stats required for this build. I have 50 on Vigor, in order to have enough health to eat some hits. Enemies hit hard in the DLC, and you also need to make sure you have enough HP to tank hits if you make any mistakes. 
My mind is at 20. It's not that important since Blindspot only costs 9 FP every time you use it, which is not a lot. You could even go lower with mind if you have quite a lot of FP flasks, but in the few hours I've used this build, I've never run into FP issues, most times never even consuming a flask. I have my endurance at 35. We've bumped up endurance quite a bit since using this weapon consumes a lot of stamina. There have been times I've run out of stamina, which put me in a bit of a tough situation. So watch out for that. We'll talk more about this when it comes to your physic. Strength-wise, we just need to meet the minimum requirements for the weapon. I had my starting class as Samurai, which is why my strength is at 12, but you don't really need anything more than 10 in strength, which is the minimum. Now we come to a point where you need to decide whether you're going for the bleed version of this build or whether you're sticking with the keen version. Let me explain. You need to have at least 80 in dexterity. You could obviously have it be higher since the weapon has S scaling on dexterity. But this is a pretty good cap, especially if you're also using Millicent's prosthesis like I am, which will give you an additional five levels into dex. Now, while you'll get better damage output by having dex so high, if you're going down the bleed route, you might want to have at least 40, 50 levels into arcane. Since Arcane will increase your blood loss buildup, we don't need any intelligence or faith for this build. But like I said before, if you want to have some spells equipped, you'll probably want to take faith up to around 20 or 25 in order to use Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength, and any other spells that fall in that range. Now, like I mentioned before, this build consumes quite a bit of stamina, which is why I'd recommend going for the Green Spill Crystal Tier or Green Burst Crystal Tier in order to not run out of stamina, the green spill crystal will give you additional maximum stamina, temporarily, while the green burst crystal will increase your stamina recovery. You'll be needing stamina not just for when you're spamming your weapon skill, but also for dodging and getting parries off, in which case these two tiers might come in clutch. Another incredibly OP tier is the Viridian Hidden Tier. This is a new one from the DLC, and this one completely stops stamina consumption for a good while. This becomes incredibly OP when you're fighting bosses and making combos using Blindspot. As for your Great Rune, I think Radan's Great Rune is probably the best one for this. Radan's Great Rune gives you more health, stamina, and FP, which again can help out with the stamina issue with this build. Now this, of course, is a DLC build, but if you're still in the beginning to mid game, here are three incredible level 30 to 100 bleed builds that you could use to enter the DLC with and even be able to breeze through it. These builds deal some insane bleed damage, and they even share the same attributes as the backhand blades, which would make your life easier. I'll see you guys there.